All right, gang, you know me. It's not every day that you get to have a fellow Commonwealther on the show. And so anytime I get to speak with one of my fellow Commonwealthers, I get a little bit excited, but mostly, and in particular, because this uh, is a topic that we haven't really ever been able to discuss on the show. And I can't think of anybody better than my guest today, who is, dare I say, a master at e-commerce, especially when it comes to the online tire business. Uh, he he was named president and CEO of TireBuyer.com. The company merged with TireScanner.com, a U.S.-based tire retail marketplace launched in Florida in 2019. I'm going to let him share all about his journey and how he got into this business and also the fashion business, if I re recall correctly. Mike Welch, thanks so much for joining me here on the Dealer Playbook Podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm not sure about the master thing, though, but let, we'll... we'll, we'll <laughs> We'll explore that. We'll explore that. We'll, we'll, we'll know by the end of this 30 minutes. <laughs> sure will. Sure will. So let me ask you, are you in the, you're in, are you stateside now or are you still based in the, in the UK? No, we're in Miami. So we, we've, 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 we've camped here now. So this is the, the, the family home. So we, we made the move. My, my background, um, you know, I was a tire installer out of school. I mean, I didn't kind of stick about for, for the exams. I was straight out the door at 15, fitting tires in, in, a, in a dealership in, um, in Liverpool, actually. So, um, you know, I've kind of been in and around the tire industry pretty much all my, well, certainly all my working life, um, you know, since I was a boy. Um, so so I, I kind, of, kind of have, a, I guess, my career's evolved through dealerships and in independence and then into e-commerce and, and e-commerce was um, in, in Britain when I launched blackcircles.com, which was one of the first, certainly the first kind of what we would consider click to fit or click to install online tire retailers um, in Europe. Have you always had an entrepreneurial spirit? Because I'm trying to think of how does a 15 year old or 16 year old, I guess at this time you're, you're fitting tires, you're working in a dealership where the industry at large kind of has this stigma of dead end job, no growth potential. It, are those thoughts that you're having at this time? Like, ah, I'm just here making a few bucks. Or are you seeing potential even from an early age on something you can grow into this business? Yeah, it, it's the, to take the kind of that look back is, is, is slightly difficult because you kind of feel like I've always thought the same about the opportunity which was it was an opportunity because I didn't have many so I was very grateful to get a job and to be in, in a few books I mean the irony is I then got made redundant which forced me uh, to start to look for another opportunity and there, there were really there were not many so um, I was then um, kind of forced down a, a, down a, an avenue uh, which was to start to trade tires like that's all I knew so I had contacts so, so I guess to answer your question I've always been about the hard work you know never shirked you know the kind of the the, the tough um shift so it was about look I, I've got to make a book continue you know I've kind of you know I've, I've, right. I've set up down this channel I've got to keep going so I started to trade tires to my to my buddies um and I kind of realized that certainly in the high performance end there was a margin and actually the, the dealers and the independents, they were kind of taking a, a, a tire off a, a supplier, sticking a, an arbitrary mark up and then just getting it out the door. But actually there was, it struck me that there was some nuances in there. You know, you had performance stuff for exotic cars, you had different tiers, different brands. The market was evolving. Sizes were, were, were becoming much more fragmented. There was more brands coming in. Um, so I thought, you know, I'll give I'll give this a shot. I mean, how bad can it get? And you know, I had stacks <laughs> of tires in my in my parents' front room. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, it was it was chaotic, but it was, you know, it was kind of it was a an, an evolution of, you know, I'm buying tires off this guy today and selling them in the and, and installing them in the dealership. I just didn't have anywhere to install them. But the guy gave me an opportunity, he said here's 15 days to pay pay the bill. I had no credit, I had no cash. <laughs> You know, I just had a, it was a, just a bare-faced ask, you know, you know, please, can you help me? And he said, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. And and I, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'm feeling all of the, what I call bowel quivers of that <laughs> circumstance. Like, oh, my 
<laughs> you're about to fall off a bicycle. There's so many moments I imagine that were baked into that experience of like, I, yes, I've got to make this work. Yes, I need to produce. Yes, I know this industry. It's all I know. But also, oh man, somebody's giving Wait. me a shot here. And it's funny, you know, that it, you're exactly right. And I think the earlier in in your kind of in your career, I wouldn't say in life because it's not an age thing, but certainly the earlier in your career, you take these sorts of opportunities, the less reference points you have for what could go wrong. So actually, mm-hmm. from my point of view, it was all upside. And you know what? See, if it didn't work, I felt like I'd at least got some more experience in the bag because I didn't have those qualifications to lean back on. What I would say is in the early days, I did well. I got further. I wouldn't go as far as I did well. I got further because people gave me a chance. And, and, And that was only because I was willing to ask for a chance. I think so often people kind of, oh, I better not, I better not ask or I better not kind of put put my neck on the line. Why not? You know, there's nothing to lose. So, so that really was kind of what got me started. What I, what I started to realize as I was basically building a business, I mean, I'm selling tires, but actually what, you know, I've now got a, I've got a P and L to manage. I've got suppliers to pay. I've got customers to serve, you know, I've got a business, I've got the makings of a, of a business, um, which was, that was the daunting bit. Cause I'm thinking, well, what's, you know, cash flow. And I mean, it, you know, I'm, I'm relying on this guy, Nigel, who's given me 15 days. I mean, that's the, that's the basis of it. So, so, so as that evolved, um, I was taking strip ads in magazines and you know, what I realized I was trying to put prices in and I realized like prices go out of date quickly in the tire industry. So, you know, there was a thing called, you know, the internet was kind of happening. I'm thinking, well, right. let's find out a little bit about this. And I, and, you know, over the course of three months, I taught myself some basic coding and I built a really simple website that had prices and, and inventory on that I could change at will and just take strip ads with a URL. And that was the first move into having an internet business. Now, that wasn't because I thought you know, the internet's the place to be. It was just because it was the most economic way for me to get my offer out into 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 this small market that I'd identified and and really that was the, the start of black circles which kind of you know it, it later on really evolved into you know into something really quite quite big this is fascinating because and, and you kind of answered it but I want to poke at it a little bit more because I think it really shows a couple of things one of the things I've actually had this conversation with a few people uh, over the last week Mike and it's that the car business in particular is is rare in that it can take in somebody who has no other experience. And if they're willing to see an opportunity and to work hard, to your point, there's a life here. There's a life here and you can produce. And I was going to ask in particular how you go from no experience to starting a large e-commerce tire selling, tire fitting website and you said, I taught myself how to do some basic code. Has that always been a part of who you are? Like, is that baked into your DNA that if you don't know something, you just go and figure it out? Because I would venture to say not many people are thinking, I should teach, you know what? I think I should teach myself how to code. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, fair, it's a fair point. It's kind of a means to an end. And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I would say some might, some might not, but I would say that I was blessed with not having an ego. You know, I, I, I've, I've, li- I've spent most of my life um, kind of relishing being the underdog. Um, you know, really um, having fantastic experiences by leveraging other people's knowledge and, and being the guy going with the ask. Um, so I, I had, I mean, around that time. You know, when when this started to evolve, the Prince's Trust, which is you know the, the Prince Charles has got a a, tr- mm-hmm. a, a, a charity in the UK mm-hmm. that uh, they award grants to 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 young businesses that have kind of got a bit of a struggle. So the background is, um, you know, it, is that they're not blessed with a with a with a you know a, a kind of a jump start. So so they identified what I was doing because of the circles I'd started to mix in. You know, kind of local. Um, kind of business clubs and whatnot. So they they gave me a grant, and that was really helpful. 
to allow, allow me to buy a computer and employ somebody to do the admin. And then I had a business. And then I kind of started to, to, to learn how to run a business. And I took a night course to do accounts. So I've got this kind of business evolving, but I kind of knew that, you know, I was, I was trading this, this commodity through on the internet, but I, I wasn't retailing. And I knew that if I was going to be successful, I needed to, to retail. So I started to read. So I read a lot, you know, a lot about business, a lot of autobiographies. And that was my school, really. And I read an article on a guy called Sir Terry Leahy, who was the CEO of a business called Tesco, which is, you know, the equivalent to Walmart in, in right. Europe. Mm-hmm. And he happened to be from Liverpool. So I thought, well, he's from Liverpool. I mean, Liverpool, you know, how we, we might even be cousins. Who knows? So, <laughs> so, so I wrote him a letter. I wrote him a letter. He was, he was Forbes Business Man of the Year, and I wrote him a letter. I said, look, I'm from Liverpool. You're from Liverpool. You're a great retailer. I'm trying to retail. Would you spare me some time? Um, and not, not really expecting to get anything. And, and, you know, a couple of days later, he, he wrote me a letter. He says, come down to London. Come and see me. I'd love wow. to, you know, have, we'll have a cup of tea. We'll do half an hour. Two hours later, you know, I'd had... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was am- it was amazing, and I, this is one of those kind of moments where I was, you know. Um, anyway, subsequently, a year later, well, kind of six months, a year later, Terry invested in Black Circles, and then you know we became we become good friends, and but I, but I learned from him from one of the best retailers of his generation um, how to retail, you know, t- managing tier tiers of good, better, best product management margins customers more important most importantly customers and that gave me the the, i guess the the focus i had a kind of handful of things that i think have kept have created my style and our style in terms of the businesses that we operate as a group because there's a group of us now we kind of we tend to kind of journey around the various businesses you know the guys who've worked with me for 20 25 years and you know the cornerstone of what we do is is all about customers and you know and how we over deliver for customers and what's great in every market where you sell to consumers is that tomorrow's another day. You, you, the next customer's another customer. You get another chance. So if you get it right. wrong or if it's not right. quite on point, um, you, you've got to learn from that. And you've got to constantly evolve the offer to make sure you deliver for customers. And if you do that, because everybody says they do, but in, but in my industry, you know, at that time, Black Circles was, you know, it was a, it was a kind of, it was a small business. I mean, we were doing maybe a million dollars a year in sales. Um, you know, over the course of fifteen years, by focusing on our customers, um, you know, we built a hundred million dollar sales business. Off, uh, we raised about two hundred thousand dollars. So it was it was off. It was bootstrapped. You know, but it was we had the fundamentals right. And Michelin acquired the business in two thousand and fifteen, and used I've used Black Circles as their kind of boilerplate for e-commerce across wow. the planet so you know but but it was when i kind of come back to what was the secret source it wasn't really a secret there was there were fundamentals that we just would not waver from and it was about how we deliver for our customers every day how we create a culture of you know of of camaraderie we would ha- you know when we hired people and the same applies today to a certain extent you know and this maybe comes back to me but I wouldn't necessarily be hiring off resume, certainly not alone. It's about, it's about, you know, for me, talent is about, you know, the eagerness, the commitment, you know, just the, the kind of the fundamental drive of an individual. So we would hire differently um, and we compete, we compete every day to win. And, and like I say, win is not, you know, a kind of, a, a capitalist kind of, um, when uh, per se, it's about it's about how do we we judge our success by what our customers tell us that we're doing mm. right right or wrong, and we don't waver. And that kind of formed the you know we would engage customers quarterly, annually, and they would, they would write our business plan. What could we do better? Where do we get it wrong? What you know? And we'd listen, and we you know, and I'd want to hear the bad stuff, you know. And I I've been involved in so many businesses where you know we they'll engage customers. Um, as an exercise, but don't really you know, recycle that great, rich information that comes back, particularly if it's bad news. Nobody really wants to hear that they're getting it wrong. So right. we have this culture of tell us, tell us what we're doing. You know, this is great. You know, the good stuff's great, but really tell us how we could do better. And the mm-hmm. team 
you know, were just doubled down on that. And that would just became a like a steam train of kind of of energy that kind of just took us so far. You've mentioned the word fundamentals, and it's something that resonates with me. I, I feel like how can, you know, if you want to build a massive structure, then the foundation needs to be in place. Yeah. But the reason, the other reason it stands out to me, Michael, is, is in the retail auto industry, there has been an increase in conversation about the fundamentals, culture, hiring process. Um, you know, you've mentioned some soft skills and hard skills that you're looking for, but mostly, you know, like people that are eager, that have commitment, that, that are willing to compete, hold ourselves accountable, you know, get feedback and listen and customer experience and all of these sorts of things. My question to you is, because the the car business, for the longest time, it's like you either want a car or need a car or you don't. And if you do, we're here kind of a thing. How this day and age, because the fundamentals conversation is more prevalent, how do you hold true to those fundamentals in moments where you think things should be growing faster or maybe you feel like you're plateauing or not? Because I know that's something that a lot of people get hung up on is, yeah, yeah, I'm hearing culture, but that sounds like it takes a long time. Yeah, I'm hearing better hiring process, but that sounds like it takes a long time, so on and so forth. What's your recommendation there? Always take, the, always take that longer route if that's what it takes. I mean, the challenge with not... this Businesses are made of layers of decisions and, the, the, you know, layer on layer on layer. And, you know, you become those fundamentals are usually the leg they're made up of a, of a of a huge legacy of decisions that you and your business make around you know it's those short term you know we could get there in two steps but it wouldn't be perfect but if we wanted it perfect we'd have to get there in 15 you know or whatever it's it's a, it's a longer route round you've got to take you've got to do the right thing because you know for the we we've spent in our in our current business we've spent 12 months replumbing our technology level setting our team making sure we've got the right focus and now we're flying and i mean flying you know in two in th you know in a, a three month period we've made more progress than i think we've probably made in in 12 months in full flight of black circles because we have the benefit of our experience now mm -hmm. we knew we knew that you know it's it's it is much easier when you kind of know what kind of broadly know what's coming around the corner because right. to your point, if you kind of if you're living each day by the sales line or by you know the the margin um, uh, delivery, you know you can, it's kind of one day to the next. And I think you've got to take a be prepared and be brave enough to take a slightly longer term view, in in, in with a vision of what you want to be, you know, and and and, and recheck back on that and say that we are where we are now, and it's 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 okay, it's good, it's okay but we want to be excellent. We want to be the best in class. What's it going to take to get us there? Make a commitment to that. And unless you're talking about kind of Armageddon circumstances in, in business terms, stay true to that. And know, you know, make conscious decisions around, um, you know, if we, you know, if we do this quickly, we can get there sooner, but these are the, the unintended consequences or these are the you know the trade downs on the position that we set out as our ultimate goal um, and i think as long as you share you know the you know the the vision with the team and everybody's engaged and excited about where we're going to get to and broadly how long it's going to take you know the hard work is not something that you, know, you get people's engagement in the front and the hard work i think generally is not something that people um, you know, will shake as long as they know that at the end of it, there's, you know, a pot of gold in terms of what we end up building and creating. And we've, we've just been through that exact exercise. And we had a lot of kind of very tired people who are now super energized because they can see <laughs> what we've created. Because, you know, we can now go so fast in so many areas, right. but do it right. And what that creates is, you know, there's, there's kind of blue kind of space between us and the market in that regard because you know we've got the we've got the platform that we need to you know to really um you know to really kind of move on from so i love this it's it's something that i think we need to hear more of especially in the age of the internet and social media because 
you, if you were at, and I were to go on LinkedIn right now or Facebook, we're going to hear the best parts of people's fake lives. I, <laughs> My, you know what I mean? Uh, I just grew up. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. said experience. And, you know, we've, we've been through a similar exercise in my company um, where we develop software for car dealers, inventory management systems and website systems. And we have a marketing agency arm and things of that nature. And we've been working and pushing towards very um, specific targets and goals and initiatives. And sometimes in the monotony of the day-to-day and the ordinary of the day-to-day, if you don't have, to your point, that that goal, that focus and what you're working towards, it is easy. You know, one of my team members said, sometimes it's easy to get lost when you're wading through the, the river holding a, uh, you know, a canoe over your head is the totally. way he kind of phrased it. But now yeah. all of a sudden we're coming out and, and, and the team can see the acceleration and, oh my gosh, I understand why we needed to do that for this to happen the way it's happening now. And now there's this new revitalized energy, like, like you're saying. And, and so I think that's so important for people to hear that it's on the back of all of this experience. It's yeah. not always uh, peaches and cream. There are moments. Oh, oh man. I mean, look, you know, that, uh, there's been so, so many scuff knees and bloody noses <laughs> and I wish I'd never done that. I mean, honestly, I've made so many, <laughs> I've screwed up so many times. And I think, I think there's, the, you know, back to that, you know, I've overused the word, but the fundamentals though, remain as long as they remain in place we have some great kpis in our business that everybody shares every day we see our numbers and they're not just sales numbers and margin numbers they'll be you know satisfaction numbers they'll be the Mm. things that keep us honest you know and 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 it's the stuff that you know that we that i want everybody to know is is happening because it you know because we all share in you know the out that output is all part of what we put in and you know, uh, every day, but also, you know, to your, to your point, it's the benefit of all of that groundwork that kind of gets them. So when you, you know, when we come out to your point, when the canoes start to come down off the head and you start to come out of the swamp, you know, you can see in the numbers, you know, in those KPIs, wow, this is happening. Like this is changing. You know, my guys, are, our market, our market kind of broadly speaking is down at the moment. You know, our, we, we're punching 150 200% growth but it's not because you know we've there's a there's there's a you know we've hit a you know a eureka moment there's no there's no right. kind of gold golden ticket it's right. a cum- it's an accumulation of maybe 20 different initiatives or kind of you know or pinch points that we've addressed or you know there isn't a you know there isn't there's never in my experience you know, just that kind of one golden, you know, golden initiative or golden moment. It's a combination of, of everything. It's that culmination of all of the efforts coming together. And it's my job to make sure that I'm communicating our progress on that journey. So, you know, when the guys do feel like, you know, rich, and we've, as I say, we've been through it. What you've just articulated is, is almost identical to where we've been in the last, you know, the last 12 months. Um, and the way to, we keep going is that we have those checkpoints. Where are we? Are we, you know, once we get this in, you know, we have this runway in, in front of us, and you know, and the guys got to be able to believe in that. Um, and it gets, you know, it, it gets tiring. But 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 I think th- so. The most important important thing is, I think, setting out who do we want to be, where do we want to get get to, and also having a little bit of flex in there because the market changes, and actually, the, there's there's in the journey of developing to that end, there's some discovery as well, right? So, you know, you kind of feel like, well, you know, perhaps we need we need to pivot a little bit because it's not right. quite, you know, the direction we were taking might not be ex- as exact as we thought and, you know, and having that flexibility. Um, but having everybody on the on the journey and, and being able to check in with their progress, I think is really important. This is spectacular. I can only imagine then, you know, you mentioned experience and, and I'm, you know, Mike, I don't know what happens around turning 40, but I feel like you start seeing the world through a different lens and you start seeing moments in, you know, and you, you've kind of alluded to this, those mistakes and, 
those moments of why isn't this happening fast enough? And look at that company over there. They seem to be doing something that I'm not. And I look back over my my career up to this point in what I feel like now is an acceleration, like we're, we're pedal to the metal, so to speak. And I realize now through these more established goggles, if you will, True. that everything has happened the way it needed to happen for me. Yeah. And part of that journey was finding the right people to go on this adventure with me. Is that been similar for you? Do you see how having the right people is something that's necessary in order to achieve those fundamentals and be able to push past them? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, that's probably why from Black Circles to Tire Buyer, you know, we've been one of the reasons we've been able to move so much quicker is because I kind of knew, you know, and almost immediately what, what I needed and who I needed to surround the business with um, in terms of roles and types of character and, and some of the same characters actually. So there's, there's that whole, I mean, that took me ages. I mean, I couldn't afford people and, you know, in, in blacks, it was really, uh, it was a process of, of elimination really. It was kind of, you know, you learn it, you learn as you go, you make your mistakes. The hunger games. Oh my word. I mean, it's some of the, some of the biggest successes and biggest failures have been around people for me. And, you know, you've got to get it, you know, you've, You've got to give yourself a bit of flexibility to, to, to make, you know, to make the, you, you sometimes won't make the perfect decisions, but ultimately trust your gut, particularly if you've got experience and, you know, and go with, um, you know, have faith in the in your people and back them and, you know, and, and you know, nine times out of 10, it, you know, it, it'll, it'll work out. But, you know, the, the, the exciting thing on this, on this journey that we're on is, as we evolve the business, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really, you know, it, I would say in the black circles, it was, you know, we were facilitating the growth of the business this time around, because there is a little bit of being able to see around the corners. We're trying to hire in anticipation. So we've got time to hire the right level of talent. We've got, right. you know, we, we're willing to pay a bit more, you know, for, for the person than, we might be if we didn't think that we were going to, you know, I was always, right. you know, do I, if I could just push it a little bit, you know, maybe I should, but I don't know if we're going to take another step up in, in growth or you kind of got more assured. I've got more assurance on the basis of experience now so we can hire more confidently. And I, and again, I would say if you find the right person um, based on not just their resume, but all the other attributes and the chemistry is right you pay whatever you need to pay within reason because, you know, great people um, are, you know, are, are rocket fuel. I mean, it's such a, you know, carrying people versus, you know, great people who are self-starters and can get the job done. I mean, it's such a, you know, it's a mm. night and day scenario. I love that. Um, with all of this experience that you have now, and as the retail auto industry is really starting to pay close attention to e-commerce models or maybe a hybrid model, what are some common misconceptions that you think people have about e-commerce that you've learned or dispelled through your experience over the years? That's a good question. I, I think um, well, the first thing is they're not different customers. You know, I don't get the e-commerce customer because I get the people who come into my store type mentality. They're the same person. And in fact, they, they've, they've merged and are merging at a rate that is now kind of, you know, irreversible. So if before you were able to, to you know, to draw a line between those that came into your store and those that would shop online, you know, it, it's we're now in a world where there's you know different behaviours for different circumstances. I would say that rather than be demographically different, there's situational differences. So in my business, mm. you know, a customer, we, we you know we can install tyres with mobile vans next day. So that same customer who needs that service at the you know today because they have a blowout. They might not need it, you know, next year or, or in six months' time because they've kind of spotted the tire needs replaced and they can be a bit more organized and they can take it to one of the stores for an in-store. 
So that diff- you know, for, from my perspective, we, we need to make sure we have all of the different situations that customers might find themselves in covered. So, you know, we provide, you know, uh, we've got to be as accessible as possible with different types of service to suit those different situations. I would say, you know, if I was running a, you know, a kind of a traditional brick and mortar business, I would be looking to try and use technology, not just from the front end e-commerce user experience, but within my business. So how can I embed technology to make processes more efficient? How can I make information more accessible? How can I understand more about my customers and about my business's performance? Because technology is not just about selling things on the internet in a business. It, it, it's, it's about how you can make yourself you're more profitable, more efficient, more insightful, um, and, and give you give you know give yourself the mental headspace to to grow and focus on how you develop your business as opposed to be in it all the time. Get on it, um, and I think I think we're in we're in a we're in a really interesting period um, of of you know these two worlds absolutely colliding and merging. You know, and there's a great opportunity for for open minded. Um, you know, business owners to to start to really embrace technology if they haven't before. Amazing. Um, the one last thing that I wanted to just touch on because I think this is so tremendous. Um, you were awarded an OBE Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. I wanted to say that. I wanted so hard <laughs> to be able to say that with a British accent. Perhaps a top hat and a monocle. And uh, I don't cool. know why that's Next the visual. Time. <laughs> the British Empire, you know, um, British. <laughs> by the Queen in 2006. So you actually get to meet the Queen in this in this yeah, yeah. ceremony. What what was that like? I need to know. That was great. That was great. She was very. <laughs> um, she, she she knew about the Prince's Trust, and it was it was excellent. Actually, we were. Uh, it was very honoured, um, and it was for services to business and charity. And part of I'd worked with the Prince's Trust. We set up a charitable trust myself and my wife after we sold black circles um and we you know we put a lot of energy into adoption fostering and critical illness in, wow. in kids so mm-hmm. you know we, we we probably spend a quarter of our time you know really just investing you know our energies in in trying to further those those causes um so it was lovely to be recognized and at the same time like i say she you know she was aware of the prince's trust and getting me started and we've kind of subsequently got involved with with that in Europe and we served on the board of the Princess Trust and various other things. Oh, so wow. it was a nice, really nice recognition. She's a lovely, lovely lady. <laughs> well, and, and I mean, you know, um, I, I, I don't know if monarchist is the right term, but I mean, growing up in Canada, um, well, yeah. you know, she's yeah. on all of our money. She's, she's everywhere. <laughs> I mean, she, she's our, you know, head of state and, uh, you know, so, so I'm always yeah. intrigued by those who have had a chance to meet her in person, but more, more so I want to just underscore how uh, amazing I think the work that you're doing through the charity and through your trust is and, and, you know, providing opportunities to, you know, children and, and, and individuals to help them understand how great they are and how totally. much capacity they have and how much more powerful they are than they're probably giving themselves credit for. I think, you know, just, I, I wanna really underscore that because I think that's tremendous and, and certainly congratulations to you and your wife. Thanks, I appreciate it, thank you. How can those listening get in touch with you? So I'm on LinkedIn, so uh, uh, Michael Welsh, um, and um, also you can reach out, email me by, by all means, uh, mwelsh at tirebuyer.com. I'd love to, to love to hear from, from, from anybody, you know, is it like the Terry Leahy note? I mean, just reach out. I can't Amazing. promise a cup of tea in London though, but uh, <laughs> certainly a reply. Maybe a marmalade sandwich at a Liverpool match. Paddington, you got it. There you go. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much for joining me on the Dealer Playbook Podcast. Lovely. Thanks for having me. Cheers.